Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 2911 Podcast with Brian and Allie McKithen. This is part two, continuing mysteries of iniquity, and I hope that you guys really enjoy this. The false is like I said, you have to understand it to be able to stay away from it. You have to know what it is to not fall into it. Can't just blindly do things. I'll give you another one. So a lot of people say this about a lot of people ask me about this. Okay, so you don't. Once they know I don't celebrate Christmas, so do you celebrate your birthday? Me personally, no, he does not. No, but I'm not gonna stop anyone for for blessing me. You know, I don't go out and party, or I don't go out and make. I have to say, hey, babe, you know I like carrot cake. Give me a carrot cake, or you know, it. This is how I treat it. If you know me and you want to honor me on my birthday, mm-hmm. cool. Now that doesn't say I don't honor you or the boys or anyone who knows me knows that yeah Brian's gonna do something for them on their day mm-hmm. but just Brian necessarily I don't it's, celebrate it, and, and it's they not don't understand. on me it comes to out celebrate of a place, my day it comes out of a place of meekness you're not putting yourself on this pedestal oh I deserve to be celebrated right and so when people find out so you don't celebrate Easter well how do you remember the Lord every day I wake up I, I that's true but if you want to if you want to just draw Easter into the equation do you, I go, do you celebrate the Passover? What about the spirit of the Lord who came over all the first bur- all the firstborns in Egypt and he mm-hmm. he passed over those who were of his people who put the blood over the door over the doors and wiped out the first the firstborns in Egypt. Mm-hmm. What about that spirit? What about God when he did that? Mm-hmm. Now, if you follow the timeline and the calendar the and calendar not, we use isn't the calendar that not, the Jews used then. And I'm so not saying So you would this, understand the yeah. resurrection of Christ is more equated with the with the uh, Passover than it is quote unquote Easter. And that's what I was going to say. I, not that the resurrection is not important, but there's so much more to the resurrection than just the resurrection itself. He's alive. That's where it was finished. Right. That's where his work was done. Right. But that's not where it started. Right. And and it's not only... It, it, I will say this. That's when it was... I wouldn't say done. That's when it was fulfilled. Because he is to come back. And then, fin- and then finish his Why do you say that? Because you have the famous line where he's on the cross and he it's says, a, it, it is, is finished. Yeah. Correct. So, when, so anyone who wants to ask me, well, what do, what do I celebrate? There are holidays that are mentioned in the scriptures mm-hmm. that God said... Keep this in remembrance. Do these in remembrance of me. You know, pa- he he says, pass these on to your generations mm-hmm. so that I'm not forgotten. There are things that we are supposed to uphold and take. But it, it became so, like I said, it's warped. It's not just warped. It's like this. The scripture says, train a child up in the way that he should go so that he might not depart from it uh, when he leaves his youth. Right. So I say this. When the slaves were taken. Or anybody who's in captivity, anyone who's under the thumb of another person, mm-hmm. like they're trying to do now, it's easier to attack the the, the generations to come, mm-hmm. so that you can than the generations wi- that are already established. Right, so you can wipe out the, the history oh. of what already happened to then implement a history that you want to be known, like this. That's why they're changing I, history. I argue this with any. I argue this with anybody until I pass away. Not all black people who came to America were slaves, mm-hmm. but but Not history. Not all black people are from Africa. But history <laughs> would tell you all the black people who are in America, what you're taught in school, they're were slaves. slaves. It's not true. But if you if you do your own reading, what is and things that are publicized in, in books and mm-hmm. just history within itself, you will learn. Black people holler for reparation. All oh, the Jews got reparation. Why can't we get reparation? You're going to find out that maybe your great, 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 great grandfather was actually a slave owner. Black people owned slaves. During this time, we say only white people were in dominance. Oh, man. What was that? Hell on Wheels? Yes. Where? Yes. What was he? Norwegian? No, Swedish? Norwegian? Mm-hmm. He was a Nor- Norway. He was a Norwegian. And he said that they those got treated. Those people that, that, those, that the is the white gen- slaves that, that but came. But hold on. That is the culture yeah. in which Christmas originated from. Mm-hmm. The Norwegian culture. And when they got brought over here, people 
of that skin color were treated worse yes. than the black slaves. Yes. Worse than the black slaves. It's 2911 podcast on Spotify. How are you going to do that on YouTube? <laughs> Edit you it just, out. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the, one, of the, one of the things that I mean a lot of people of my skin color get into it about... They want, like, when I try to help them understand and break them free from that bondage of what they believe in, all black people are slaves. What if you found out your your black grand great ancestor was a slave owner? How would you feel? Mm-hmm. Well, that's not possible. So then because I dig and I, so I dig, I dig and I show them the evidence. And then, then they come to find out, okay, before there was a presidential establishment, there was a black man who was and here's, the and, and here's why I think there that- There was black men who had- who had share crops. There's black men who had this. There's black men who had that. Well, where did these black men come from? Oh, they came from Europe too. Oh, there was black nobility in, in Europe. Oh, there were black queens and kings in Europe. Oh, shoot. Well, and the thing, the thing that's mind boggling to me is that for people that want to stay in that slave mentality, it's easier for you to accept and believe and take on that identity of a slave than to take on the identity of now nah, my people used to be rulers. That's mind-boggling to me. But, but you know why? I can tell you the answer to that. That's because they they worship and do of the cardinal mind. If they had some spiritual understanding of who they are, and this is what the devil did to the chosen of God. Mm-hmm. He stripped them of their spirituality and gave them a carnal mindset. Mm-hmm. So where this slave mindset, where this... I'm a uh, promiscuous uh, promiscuous woman mindset where this I'm going to be nothing better than what situation I am right now. And don't put on that kingdom mindship. I'm not saying everyone's supposed to be walking around here with jewels and Rolexes. and. and But it's a mindset at the end of the day. It it does start with your if you know who you are spiritually, everything in the flesh will manifest its way out. If you walk in, it's like I've tried to tell one of our brother in laws and I tell my sister destiny this all the time, man. Wealth is a mindset. If you're poor, it's because you're poor up here. It starts. You're poor up here. It starts there. It starts there. It does start there. But like this book taught me. And I thought you were just about to say muscle and a shovel. It's easier to believe a lie that you've you've heard a thousand times than to believe in the truth that you're hearing for the first time. Yeah. Because you've been peddled this thing for for generations, years and years and years. So, I mean, you heard the lie so much, it just becomes believable. So when someone comes to you with new information or the truth and better information or the knowledge of what is, like, I'll tell you another thing about this, uh, about, you know, the subject of mysteries of iniquity, the... The, the horns, the, the horn sign. Or people will say, oh, I love you. Or oh, it means rock on. Or this, that, and the third. But before our people, before our generation, before this time and era in which we live in, it had a different meaning. People think, oh, this just means okay. Oh, no, that had a different meaning. I'm telling you. It had, I, has, uh, has. Well, yeah, because some people, some cults, yeah. some people use these different. Ha- the Masons have a, have, have a certain handshake they do. We, to the naked eye, are people who don't know these things. We are all. And it's that's like, just them. And this is what But I'm, these are things that they've been peddling mm-hmm. from generations since before Solomon, since the time of Solomon, since why God wanted to, to flood the earth. And these heard, things have been going on from generations. Christ I, said, this generation is worse than the generation of Noah. And, that the and he people, wiped Noah's generation and out. There's nothing new under the, But I think that's why Christ is coming back in this generation. That's why there ain't gonna be no more after this generation when Christ comes back. But I don't, I don't, I rarely give parenting advice because I feel like I fail daily. I, I know I fail daily. But if there is one thing that I would give, and it's the way that I train my children, why are you doing that? I don't know. Then don't do it. Exactly. Don't do any. My if, dad, if my dad would say that all the time. You can't give me a reason why you're doing something. Don't do it. For instance. I've been catching the boys a lot sit down in the little Buddha uh, meditation stance. Why are you doing that? I don't know. I saw it on a cartoon. So do you know what it means? No, ma'am. Then you shouldn't do it. When you're old, when you can understand, I'll tell you. But it's not a good thing to do because you should never have an open mind. Right. What do, what do you what are you trying to channel through? See, and Ethan is one that I will give. To and I don't mean an open Ethan, mind to understanding things. I mean an open mind to where spirits can come yeah, in and fill you. But no, you're, I'm you're saying for channel. people who are listening. Oh, okay. 
for an, an open mind to where other spirits can come in and fill you yeah, with things that are not of God. Your gateway. I don't mean understanding things of the world or trying to understand other people or things like or cultures. Right. Have an open mind in that set. But there's no reason you should be purposefully emptying out your mind to allow like, channeling. Like, like uh, that video I was watching where that pastor was talking to that median. And she, oh, I mean, yeah. she, she just emptied it all out about what Wiccans and what medians and all that, all them mm-hmm. do. And he, and he let it, and he gave it right back to her. Like, you understand if you are not in your body, you're someone else is in your body. Some other spirit. You say this is a familiar spirit. You don't understand what the scriptures say about familiar, familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are demons. You understand what in Kings, what uh, the prophet uh, Samuel told King Saul. Hey man, why are you messing with that witch? Like you, you know better than connecting to me from this, from that plane to this plane. Meaning your realm of existence and my realm of existence. This is why the scriptures say, "I suffer not a witch to uh, live. to live." It's just like as a parent, there's certain things you just don't like. Your children just don't need to know. There's just certain things you don't need to do. There's certain things I shouldn't need to give you an explanation. Just understand. When, when when doing these things, yes, yeah, for your protection. When doing these things, it only brings evil. Mm-hmm. It only br- the dark magics. What about dark magic? Sounds pleasant. The only thing I do in the dark is <clears throat> sleep. What what is so <laughs> what is so cool or so pleasant about, about being things in... just flying around the room? See, and, and speaking of, what, what, in that essence, what is righteous or heavenly about that? And I would say I've been, (coughs) I wouldn't say I've been, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say, but I'll put it this way. Speaking of familiar spirits, I think this is why I still cry so much about my dad's loss. Cause you know, anything can trigger it for me, but I do it because I'm so scared of familiar spirits. I'm so terrified of conjuring up a familiar spirit that I'd rather just cry every single day and mourn my dad every single day. Because I remember when my friend, my best friend lost her brother and she would tell me like, oh, I wake up, I tell him good morning. And it was the hardest thing for me to tell her, don't do that. Don't try to talk to your brother's spirit because what you're going to do is you're going to open the gateway for a familiar spirit that's but, going to present themselves but, so the, as your the brother Mexican and religion. it's not them. Day of the Dead. Uh, yeah, there, there's yes, religions there that muertos that muertos. celebrate and they they con they they do these Conjure things, things up. Yeah. in in a quote unquote way that they believe is righteous. Like I said, look up the scriptures. The scriptures say there's a way in which a man believes is righteous amongst himself, but it is evil under God. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like whenever Paul goes back to say, like, Lord, all the things I desire to do, I do not do. But all the things I don't want to do, I do. And he means that in a spiritual sense. Right. Because Paul understood the things I want to do are righteous things. But I keep giving into my own desires, which are unrighteous. Correct. But get into what you're saying. Do you believe it was for it? And that's your husband now. I'm talking. I hear you, I hear you say you, you're mourning a lot. Do you think that is of God? I would say to be depressed, down and out, I don't believe that that's of God. But I think the way that I have my moments where, man, I miss my dad, I let it out. And then, you know what? I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord anyways. I think that's of God. And and I had to check the scripture say, uh, check the spirit. So I needed to check your spirit to see where you were at. Yeah, no, I'm not saying I I would be in the wrong. I would not say I'm depressed. I would not say... I would be in the wrong as your husband to hear you say that yeah. and allow you to be in a state that is not of God. So if you were to tell me and I were to hear something that would have been a red flag. Now, yes, you're going to mourn. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not saying not to remember your dad, but if it like you were saying depression, if it took you to a state. Like where I couldn't get out the bed, I couldn't. Right. No, now, I, I don't believe that. God would ever have me to feel like that. And I do. And I do also understand for before someone says, oh, Christians get depressed, too. I know I've been yeah, there. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not saying there. you can't be there. Depressed. There's things like but I'm saying you can there, do there, things there, that there prevent are it. there are very real things that play a hand in that your birth control could be messing with your hormones, which is a big reason why I got mine out. And I feel completely different than whenever I was on it. Acted too. Oh, 
hormones just in general, um, pressures of life. But then again, that's why the Lord tells us, you don't have to carry your burdens. Give them to me. There are very real things that you can do to prevent those things. Am I saying I've been a 100 at them all the time? Because no, sometimes after I've leaned on God, I have to come lean on my husband because I need that reassurance. But I want, I do want to say this for anyone that's grieving, be careful because it's been very, there have been days where I have caught myself of, man, I just want to see my dad and I have to be careful with thinking that too much. Yeah. Because what am I going to do when his silhouette pops up in front of me one day? Like we have, like, I, and I'm laughing, but that's really not funny. No, because we, we have a, uh. An older couple that we've been leaning on since, man, even before we were married. Yeah. And she told you about when her her, her own mother um, yeah. came she to her, her and she was like, and she had to tell that spirit, like, no, my mom's dead. Like, yeah. I might grieve and I have grief in this mm-hmm. moment and the, the moment's missing her, but God knows, I know she's dead and this ain't, this ain't right. And I love how God... I'm not saying that I'm thankful that her mom passed, but the way God ordains things with people in your life, I had her to lean on because she experienced losing a parent. Right, right. But then I had Raquel to lean on because she's in her grief journey with me. She's leading me. This is what I do. This is what helps me. And I just remember Marina telling me, it's going to be hard. Feel it, but don't stay there. Right. And that's one thing that I've held on to this entire time. Feel it, but don't stay there. And that's one thing me and Raquel tell each other every day now. I'm glad you're feeling it. Now, what are you going to do after you feel it? What's the plan after you allow yourself to feel it? Right. Because we, you can't stay there. Right. We got things to do. We got people to take care of. And, that, and it's not just that, but like I said, you got to be careful with what you're opening yourself up to. Right. Now, carrying on what you just said, you can't stay there. That's the feeling I had when I came into the knowledge of understanding about holidays. Okay, I now know the truth. I can't stay here. Lord, so what do I do? Now, for me, Christmas, Valentine's Day, like, all of these things commemorate things of ancient times. Commit. Not just Kemet itself, but there's other cultures that America's called, remember, in the scriptures where America's lined up is called Babylon the Great. We're not Babylon. We're but a lot we like are it. A re, how do you, incarnation. A reincarnation of Babylon, of what their old system was, their old mm-hmm. way of doing things. Do what I will. Do what I will. So, I mean, this is not when I say, yet again, for Valentine's Day. So people yeah. also, like, I've had women I've worked with, like, oh, you don't do X, Y, and Z for your wife? You don't know. I give my wife gifts every week or at once a month. Not only that, I but give, you don't know my... My dad, my dad told me, hey, son, keep, keep it, it in, in the green. green. And not only that, but you don't know my wife's birthday is two days after Valentine's yeah, Day, so know. we're doing things the whole for, week. For one, for one, for one. I don't, Ain't nobody's business. Right. But in the way I say it, it's this. For one, I'm not married to you. And if I was, I'd be doing the same thing to you. So you telling me you would you would decline twelve gifts, and, and this is including within for Christmas. me to go all out on one day. You rather decline twelve gifts, all for gifts on this one day. Right. I would find this out if we were dating. Okay, I don't celebrate uh, Valentine's Day. Oh no, why not? Oh, this is how I feel. We'll, we'll have to bat. Now, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you these twelve gifts, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I which love in you that and I appreciate which you. in that sense, God paired us together perfectly, because when we first met, I said, "Don't buy me, don't buy me no gifts. I don't yeah, want. Give me snacks. You get know. me something I can use. This, these are facts. These I said, facts. and so even whenever. But what did I do? I got you snacks and, and I still followers. got you. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna still do it my way. But like I said, one thing God showed me was, you know, son, if you're gonna do, like I said, my dad always taught me keep it in the green. Yeah. So I learned to give you gifts every or once a month, right? Mm-hmm. But then I also understood just because I'm not gonna do Valentine's, it doesn't mean I don't I'm not supposed to show you love I me love every you, day. Appreciate you. You know, yeah, we're gonna go on dates, but 
I can bring Valentine's Day in the winter. Stop I can bring Valentine's eyes. Day in, in the <laughs> summer. I can do Valentine's Day at least once a month. Why give it one specific day when I can do this? And not only end, that, but that's that, in, that's a, that's another holiday where you need to you need to learn the root of it. Yeah. Because okay, a lot we were talking of these, about uh, the the Baphomet. Yeah. Understanding what the back who the Bacchus is. Yeah. Understanding this is a this was a time for for uh, fertility spirits wine. Why do you think? Why do you think most people trying to get it in on Valentine's Day? Sex magic. That that's what it was already. That's what it was in the ancient times already. Yeah. In ancient and uh, iniquity. That's what they were doing on that day. Getting drunk, Hordies. hooking up, doing the do. But and not just with one person. Uh, Groups. Right. Animals. Well, yet again, when I'm not giving these shows any big ups, but we learn from these shows. Watch True Blood. No, American Gods. That I, one. Okay, American Gods. That snitch. one just tells American it all. American Gods will snitch into. They, like I said, it, it got really intense. We like are, we had we to stop are, watching it. Where we? Yeah, we did start watching it. Where we? Where we are in this time and day? I'm telling you, since 2020, they're not hiding their agenda. No, they're not. It's they, out they're there. They're gonna let you know. But that show, American Gods, it will tell you. Everything and do not and do not be deceived by this Bud Light and this Target pulling out because at the end of the day they worship money. That's why they're pulling out. They've they, shown still, they still got the and, stuff on the shelves. But that's what I'm. But I. But what I'm saying is, just because they're making it appear to you that oh we do care what they think, that's not true. They just see oh they're not ready for this yet. We'll try right. to push it out later right. down the line. Right. They're not ready for it. Let us let let us let us de. Let, let us desensitize this a little bit more before we push it out again. And that's why I like say this. it's been in our face. Brian and I will go back and watch music videos from a long time ago or watch shows from a long time ago. And I'm like, I don't remember that being right, in there. Right. But it's because we didn't know what to look for then. Like, like this. When we were in school, I was getting ready to get out. When Bush was president, a couple of states did accept uh, gay marriage. It wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't a federal thing. So for a Republican to say, oh, this is a, the, the Democrat, or I say Democrats, this is a Democrat thing. These, these are what the Democrats are doing. Understand, another show that's good, uh, uh, House, House of Cards. Cards. House of Cards will show, show you politics are in bed with each other. Mm-hmm. I'm going to act like a Republican, but I'm, I'm taking this Democrat out to, you know, me and this Democrat, you know, do business together. I'm helping him, he helping me, I'm scratching his back. Like, like people who think Trump is just... Solely for a certain... Two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same... People who think Trump is only Republican. He... That is a character. I ain't gonna lie. He did make America great. That is... (laughs) That character did do some things. But I'm just saying, that is a character. These people are characters. They're playing a... They're playing a character. It's all scripted. Everything's already uh, scripted. The only thing... The only thing... And I... Sorry, I just gotta say this. When it comes to the government, entertainment, entertainers... Their lives are scripted. Everything that they're going to do has already been scripted. The only thing that they cannot script is you as a believer because your script has already been written. You just got to fall in line with that. You have to say yes to that and do not let them script you. That's what I'm saying. If you look throughout history, you'll see people who peddle both sides. Like, look at Biden. But I, I was told when I was a kid, he was trying to incarcerate black men. Now he telling black men, you're not black if you don't vote Biden. You're not even the same shade as me, bro. How can you tell me then this is how to be black? If I was of a of a carnal mind, you know. But I just like I just I you know I don't vote anyway. Anyone can feel how they want to feel about that. Yeah. The spirit. I mean. That, but what, you also. What's written but is, you also don't complain. Right. That, that that's my only thing. If you don't vote, don't complain. <laughs> but but it, I mean, the thing is this: if if you're gonna be a like this, this is why I, I would side with Republicans more. If you hate me, mm-hmm. thank you for letting me know you hate me. That just tells me not to be around you. Mm-hmm. This is why I don't understand about the Democrats. It's don't like, tell me you like yeah. me. You lead me down the alley and then you get me everybody wanted, and beat up. Everybody and wanted, then it was like, oh, bro, you didn't know? Everybody wanted to be screaming that song, Fake Love, but then accepted the fake love when it was knocking at their door. Right. Right. So, I, but this is why I love politics. I love politics. Everyone knows I like to, to debate, argue, anything. But I really do love politics. 
but 10 out of 10 do not recommend for a marriage <laughs> but house of cards shows you a lot of good things american god shows i mean these things are just out right there but what i'm saying is there's been hidden agendas that we didn't know about and now they're All coming the to the light yeah and that's the thing. Like, and, and so now yeah. that they're coming to the light, it's like, they, they do it's it like what are you going to do now? Are you going to accept this lie for and, what and it I, is? And I still even or feel like correct yourself I still in feel your like lives? that's even or even within the way that the government or the world, this the U.N. basically the system. Yeah. The way the system is pushing it out. I, I think that they think that they're in control of that, but even God is in control. of God that. ordained it. And, and I believe that that is is because it's God being like. Let me see. Are you are you still gonna serve me after this? Are you still gonna serve yes. me after this? Are you still gonna serve me after this? It, it, he's, because he's, it's, he's, not, it's not for them. It's God, for God's people. Every step of the way, God is separating the wheat of the wheat, the wheat from the weeds. This, this is not just whenever He comes back for us. This is a daily thing from God right. that He is separating the wheat from the weeds. It's and just you like Joshua. Out if you're the when wheat God the had wheat. Joshua tell tell the people. You're gonna choose this day whom whom you're this gonna serve. Day. You're gonna choose now that now that the it's conviction's out and now that now that the truth is out. You're gonna choose what you're gonna do about it, and that's and so these people who think they're they're peddling pedophilia, they're peddling transgender. I mean, they're happy in, in all the evil that they're doing, but they don't understand that from day one, it's been ordained by God for the truth to be told, so that the chosen choose. Mm-hmm. The, the scriptures talk about chosen the, the cho- but i'm saying towards in the new testament and towards revelation it talks about the elect remember mm-hmm. god's gonna choose a certain number out of each tribe mm-hmm. so there's an elect group of people there's an elect like it's already been ordained you might be saved but the scriptures do say the elect might fall to the to the to the whims of the antichrist mm-hmm. so it's all given to us by God to choose. Are we going to peddle in righteousness? Or are we going to peddle in filth? Are we going to choose God? Or are we going to choose these unclean spirits? Are we going to do what thus says the Lord? Or are we going to do what says Brian McKithen? Because this is what I feel like, Lord, and this is what makes me happy. Mm-hmm. We, we have choices to make. Every last one of us. This is why God calls children innocent. I mean, children learn most habits through their parents. Mm -hmm. This is why something that happened here where we live, you know, everyone's in an uproar about this little girl who was hanging out doing what grown folks do at grown folk hours of the night, but then no grown folks tell this little girl, maybe this is where she ought to be, or no grown folks were telling this little girl parents, hey, your little eight-year-old around here, woo 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 at the mountain. Nobody was looking out for this little girl. And we're not saying that we're happy about what happened to her. We're not saying we're happy about the situation. But we do have to look at things through a realistic lens. Correct. Now, if that was me back in my day at that party, and I I had to ask a group of men that that I'm in a group chat with, are you telling me if you saw her walking to the walking to the little function, walking to the party, would you have told her to go home? Nope. Chastise your own heart before you start passing the bullets in, in the chamber to everyone else. Because I know me at eighteen, it starts I wish somebody would have tried to be fighting, bro. Who, who was you to tell me to get up out of here? The only the only way you was gonna get me out of there is dial Ronald McKiffin. All right, you call my dad. All right, I'm out of here, bro. Bye. I, I, <laughs> okay, go home. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. You say less. You calling my pops? Everyone know. Hey, I'm calling Deacon McKithen. All right, now mind, bro. You got this one. You got this. Yeah. I'm out of here. But, but I, I'm what, saying, but, but, my, but, but yeah. a real person would have been like, hey, hey, little girl, hey, shawty, you need to get up out of here. Like, there ain't nothing in here. And you drinking? You get like, why didn't no one take the bottle out of her hand? Why? Why didn't it? Who? The girls or the dudes that she came with? Why wasn't nobody walking with her? Like, why wasn't there a buddy system in play? There was. There's so much more preventative measures mm-hmm. than saying, "Why was this 40 year old doing what he did?" But why was that 18 year old walking in evil? And, and, this, is a, yeah. this, this, this person is already tormented and demonic. He gonna do what he do. Mm-hmm. How are you gonna tell? It's up to us. It's up to yeah. It's up to us to train our children why, on how to prevent this. Light, those yeah. who have the light. Why didn't you move this young girl? 
out of the darkness. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, I know this is what you want to do, but this ain't for you, Shorty. And it's I like don't a, think you understand the people that have yeah. been here. This life ain't for you, Shorty. You 18. Girl, yeah. you ought to be getting ready to get in these books, go to college, get make yourself a life of yourself, and get up out of the community start that you're in. Just anything Yeah, like get ready to start up your own business. Hey, there's so much more than being grown. Be a kid. Yep. Do, do what you need to do and get up out of here. Yep. You don't need to be right here. What, there's got, nothing yeah, for you right here. It's gotten to the point to where I don't even let my oldest son even glance at my phone anymore. What are you looking at my phone for? Ain't nothing in there for you. Right. Be a kid. I, I, I'm che- go. Cherish the time that you got. Yeah, and, because and, and, when it's gone, it's gone. Now now, you, now it's time to... See, right. we're supposed to be training our kids mm-hmm. for adulthood. Ethan, look. But now, hold on. Let, let me... Ten, yeah. Look, there's some people now in this world who will take a 10-year-old and do some things. But listen, this is how you defeat that. You call dad. You call mom. You do these things. These are the things that you do to prevent that. Hey, son, it's cool to go to parties. But you think it's cool to be at a, at a house party where there's no adults? People might come in there with guns. People might be doing mm-hmm. drugs. Understand, you're going to have a time in your life where you might get this opportunity to do it. But just because... It's an opportunity. Doesn't mean you have to do it. So now, and then, just because that person's not hooked on drugs, don't mean you might not get hooked on drugs. And it then backpedals you, and now you're addicted to something stronger, or you living out in the streets, or it it tormented your mind. Just because it didn't do that to that person, don't mean it it might not do it to you. Just because this person is good at doing whatever they're doing, doesn't mean this lifestyle is for you. The lifestyle that you're supposed to walk in is in righteousness. And you can be blessed upon bigger means of what I... And this is the talk my dad had with me. Stop looking at trying to compare yourself to me and be good at what I've done. Be better than what I've gotten. This was what I've gotten. You, you're you supposed to do so much more. This is the same thing. And I didn't know this until I followed God. This is the same thing Christ was telling his disciples and, and telling the apostles. You're going to do so much. The scriptures say he told them, you're going to do so much more greater things than I have. That's the mindset we should have. It's not about what I got or being like Joe Schmo down the street, driving in nice cars. We walked the bam. And I can say that. Why? Because we started off in that little green Toyota Corolla. Sleeping on the floor. And, and I don't care what we're driving in now because that's not mine. For one, my dream, even when we had the, the vehicles before that. The dream and the talks with me between me and you have always been when Ethan becomes of age, the car we own will become his. Mm-hmm. So this is why I teach him. Stop dirtying up this car. Stop doing this. Treat this with, with respect. Treat that bathroom with respect. Because when 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 we got visitors that come in, they're going in to your bathroom right. to see and, how and I would you say, live. And I would they're say, gonna see, they're gonna, then they're going to see how I allow yeah. you to live. So yeah, that's that's why it's an embarrassment on me if y'all be leaving the toilet seat all in disarray. Yeah, and, some, I, and I would it's, say it's that as no a, bathroom. As Take a, some pride and some respect in it. As a mother, one thing I've I've really been correcting myself at start, and I ha- still have slip ups, but one thing I've tried to stop saying is my house why are you doing this to my house and i've stopped myself like i said i just slept slipped up when i was talking to bryson earlier but brian's heard me current recently have conversation with the boys look this is all of our house yes. we should all take care of it it's so easy to be an adult and to be a parent and then be like this is mine that's my couch get off of my thing stay out of my this don't dirty my house killing my table but then if you don't ever give your children some sense of ownership, ownership right. they're never going to learn how to own anything for right. one and take care of anything for two. And that's where responsibility and accountability and that's, comes that, in. That's when these 18 year olds start thinking, well, shoot, I'm about to leave this house. I mean, ain't nothing in here, mind. Right. It's time for me to get grown, start doing grown things. So right. this, this is why I said Proverbs 22, when it says raise up a child in the way they should go. Certain certain generational curses. I mean, my father didn't do it to me, but I knew I wanted to do grown stuff, and so I had to do grown stuff about his house. But my dad was like, "Son, you're gonna go to school. I understand you didn't go. You, you probably didn't get the the uh, scholarship to go hoop where you want to go hoop. Go to the JC. You can make your own path. Just go to school. Mm-hmm. Go to go to the junior college. Major study in something." And then from there, you can go ahead and progress. And then that's when I broke him up with, oh, I'm already going to go into the military. But mm-hmm. even then, I still had to study in the military, get my, uh, my, associates. my associates. But the thing is this, my dad never gave me the sense of, 
I'm not here for you, and nor do I not want to see you succeed in something. Yeah, and, that, and that's... This goes back to the first episode we did with them having goals, not only for ourselves, but for our, our generation and their generation yeah. to come. Set goals. Because that's what my dad always showed me. Man, don't be just moving around in this world blindly. Mm-hmm. Having idle hands. Then that's how you become the, the devil. You know, the, they said the idle mind is the devil's playground. When you're just going through the motions, just doing stuff with no purpose. This is how you get swayed left and right with doctrine. Uh, you going this way, that way, this and way. That's right? why get the, rooted the, the in more, something. The more, get rooted in something. The more I mother, the more I understand scripture. And I'm currently in a devotional that's called gospel-centered motherhood and it's honing in on what our calling is as women and once we become mothers and the more I'm realizing I'm teaching my kids the gospel every single day and I don't realize it I'm training my children in the ways of the Lord every single even in the mundane things even in the things that in my mind I'm just teaching my child how to be human like this is not for the kingdom it is for the kingdom because I'm thinking about how you said what you just said and how often I have to tell Ethan, Ethan, are you thinking about what you do before you do it? Maybe you should start thinking and planning ahead before you just do stuff that gets you into trouble. And like to me, that just comes out of frustration of motherhood. But on the spiritual side of that, I'm setting my son up yeah. for his walk with Christ. That's exactly what my dad did. Every time I thought of the outcome, okay, I want to do... X, Y, and Z with Joe Schmo. But I know if I do that and he find out, it's going to be World War. It ain't going to be a World War. He just going to win. Do, <laughs> I re- do I really want this man to have to put his hands on you? Right. <laughs> That's what you're thinking. Do I really want like, this man to put his hands on you? This is before I'm as big as I am now. So I was a run. <laughs> and I ain't never thought I could take my dad. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I still don't but, think you could take but, your dad. <laughs> and I couldn't. I, God knows I wouldn't even try. But the, the thing, I did a lot of disrespectful things to now as a grown man be cowering back. I don't want to say cowering, but uh, apologizing and, and... You're humbling And yourself. humbling like, Dad, hey. I, he'd be like, he just laugh and he'd be like, son, this is okay. I understand. But he... he 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 accepts apology. And he, he said, I love your dad. He he just keep on going. Just keep on going. I mean, it, that's where it was, Brian. Mm-hmm. It's in the past. I mean, you got through that. But he jokingly Man, like, wait, that, wait, I, wait for I, Bryson. I would say wait that for is... Bryson. Because a lot of people know, wait for Bryson. But and, and and a lot that, of that's people... not that's not to put nothing bad on Bryson. But my sons are going to start making their own decisions here soon. Yeah, and if there's From any Ethan, and, Bryson, and if there's any Brian, young the people listening to this, you're you're. Bible thumping daddies and mamas may be getting on your nerves right now, but when you're an adult, you're going to cherish that. Because I remember, I can and, recite everything that man told I remember, me, even when I was in my blissness. I remember in my dad's last days, and the Lord had to correct my heart on this. But in my dad's last days, I would say for about a month, I had strayed away from going to see him regularly, taking him mails regularly, and I remember just. When he got sent home with his, just going to call it what it is, death sentence. Oh, ooh, that guilt. Dad, I'm sorry I ain't been by. No, don't even worry about that. You're here right now. And still in that moment, I was like, but I need, in that moment, I was just like, no, I need more time to say sorry. I need more time to show you that I'm sorry. Like, I just need more. But I didn't. I think that was selfishness. Because he had already forgiven me. But because I felt so guilty, I hadn't forgiven myself. This is why I believe... And I don't even mean, I don't even mean to get down this road, but I'm going to go down it now that we're here. When the scriptures say... Uh, Pride leads to destruction. Yeah. The, the ways of a pride, you know, God uh, loves the pro- uh, loves the humble, but God shows grace to the humble and resists resist the, proud. the proud. Yeah. Right. This is why, and I can't speak for you, but I can only speak for myself. Yeah. So when I got saved, and I got saved thanks to my father, and well, thanks thanks to the Spirit of God and walking in his way and my father being right there every step of the way but like I was saying when I recanted everything in my past in my mind 
the way I understood the scripture, what better way to apologize than now? Mm -hmm. There was nothing I could do. I mean, there was nothing I could do to, I mean, other than say sorry and be better. There was nothing I can do to rewrite what had happened. Yeah. But what had happened, I needed to apologize because I was. It was on your heart. Right. Yeah. And I was. It was on. My and heart, even years removed, right and I was just doing what I did. Yeah, and I was just sharing that to with. To now be better as yeah. a as a man for one now, but as a father right now for yeah. them when when we go through it. Maybe I and can that, learn the and same grace. And some people that my don't understand, Mike. That's the same grace my father had for me. I pray I can have it for you. And who's, and who's not to say within you going back and apologizing to your father for that is now breaking that generational curse. So yeah. now you don't have to wait till Bryce. And I know he says it jokingly, yeah. but that's what a lot of parents no, will we say. Just all, everyone knows Bryson's just mischievous. He, that boy is strong-willed. Like, yeah, that boy is a character for strong real. Strong-willed. He, he, you mix into one and he going to. He going to let us know. Yeah. Bryson. Wanted chips. Wanted chips. I got the chips. I'm a, but but the thing I is, in the, pool. the thing I wanted, is, I asked y'all five times. I wanted to get in the pool. And he here, said no, but I still wanted to get in the and pool. And here's the thing he with just Bryson with is that he's both of us, so he'll sneak like Brian. Yeah, he'll be sneaky like Brian, but he's gonna have the boldness of his mama to be like, "Yep, did it. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Now I did it. Now whoop me yeah. like." <laughs> yep. No regrets. That, no, that's, that's Bryson. Like, <laughs> I can't wait till he, I can't wait till he repents, gets baptized of but, the but, remission but of his yeah, sins. But but I'm saying I'm not ready for that boy to be walking in his in his blissfulness. But no, in all honesty, but like, no. But yeah, so what I was saying is like, no, it, it won't. It won't be that way because I'm saying like I I was sharing that is like. And I, and I don't know why I just received that revelation. It's like every time that we feel the need to go back and apologize or repent of something, we could be breaking a whole line of generational curses God, for just God correcting our heart in that moment. It's, yeah, it's on us to repent. And that Repentance was one thing. And that was one thing that I told my mom. You know, um, we were having a conversation the other day, and I told her I was like, "If you feel like you hurt so many people, and it's on you and on your heart, right then and there, reach out to that person and say, hey, back this time and that time, like apologize for it. it don't matter how long it's been.' It, it, the problem is this." People play a character in which they either want to be the bad guy or be the tough guy or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm Billy Billy Joe and I don't take no from nobody, you know. Why play the character? Mm-hmm. Where, where does that get you? But at, at the end of your days alone, nobody wanting to be with you, and and that and so and such and so much more. Like or you know. Like like what I learned after my dad got custody of us. You know, I'm a I'm gonna be the standoffish kid. I'm not gonna interact. Mm-hmm. What they wanna do is what they gonna do. You know how many blessings I got I missed and this is another apology I had with my dad. Man. I mean, I got to sit with my grandma and, and talk with her for a while and get to know her and her and, and those things see see things through the prism of, of truth and righteousness. But man, I missed out on growing up with Thariah. I missed out with hanging with Ryan and Brianna. I missed out mm-hmm. on a couple of trips or a couple of things I could have did with Shawan and Shawan. You know, me and Sharonda got close after a while, but there was even a, a there was even a gap between there for a while where it was like mm, me mug you, me mug me back, whatever, whatever. Right. It didn't have to be like that. Yeah, so I didn't I, have to be and prideful say, and be what, like, and, and, uh, yeah, what this, just... I don't want to be here. I could have been happy for being taken out of the situation I was in and being put in a better situation. I was just I was acting like the children of Israel when leaving Egypt. And I would say for me and I didn't ask for this. Yeah, and the Lord just put this on my heart is that don't be so prideful that you missed out on the blessings. But then don't let your humble turn your your it's meekness, right? Is the word that I'm looking for. Don't allow your meekness to become cowardness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So still be bold without it that that that's why the narrow walk is hard. Because you have to be bold, but not prideful. You have to be meek, but not a coward. Mm -hmm. And so, and I say that because, man, it's just, it's really a hard walk. And when I was sharing that with my mom, like, you know, like, don't ever be afraid to apologize and step step away from that. Because, I mean, me and my husband could, it could have been an argument 
years ago, months ago, and I'll randomly come to him. Hey, remember when I said this? I'm sorry for why are you, why are you apologizing for it? You've been forgiven, but no, like I have to say it. Like I have to say that because I was wrong and it's hard to say I was wrong, but then you also don't want to be the person that also takes the default blame for everything. Oh yeah, true. But for, you, you don't want to bear someone else's burdens. And I was, remember when I was speaking to a sweet friend and I was talking about an abusive relationship, she was like, you're carrying a shame that isn't yours to carry. Right. So you also can't become that person either because then your heart can become bitter. It can become hardened. And then you're, you've gone in the complete opposite direction of becoming Christ-like. Because like, you cannot, like I said, you can either go and be very prideful or you can become very, very cowardly in your walk. And sitting on topic with the mysteries of iniquity, some people are prideful in being in their ignorance. Mm-hmm. You know what? God ain't did nothing to me yet. I'm going to keep celebrating these things. I'm going to keep walking in these things. I'm going to keep mm-hmm. doing these things until further notice. Mm-hmm. But if, if tomorrow's not promised and today you were given the chance of repentance, why would you carry out your sins? Correct. Yeah, correct. Uh-huh. And, and that was, so I'll give people a little insight on what we decided to do. So when I told Allie, hey, I don't celebrate Christmas. This is what, you know, we walked the bam. What we turned December into was a, a month of blessings. And every week of that month, we decide, okay, we're going to bless aunts and uncles of, in the family. And this week, we're going to bless nieces and nephews. Yeah. And this week, we'll bless mother-in-laws. And this week, brothers, sisters-in-laws. And this week, bless our children. And this week. And, but that day, no, we're not we not moving around on that day. No. Because but like I said. That week of whatever, you know, we're going to dedicate a day to somebody. But that 25th day, yeah, we're not moving around on that day. 24th now, we're not moving around on that day. Now, to each their own, I'm just saying, you know, yet again, if I'm wrong, if the Lord tells me, hey, son, you know, you need to celebrate this day, okay, whatever. Someone can show me that with the scriptures or show me within proof in history where I'm wrong by not celebrating that day, I, I repent and, and go go into the, the way that the Lord has lead, led me. But celebrating, like, Valentine's Day, like like I said, what I already do for you for Valentine's, well, not Valentine's, but by loving and showing my gratitude and love towards you, I don't have to do it on this day. When I know what this day in, in commemoration of, uh, the, a lot of these quote-unquote holidays in this Western society, I mean... A lot of people, when they if they stood stood back and took a deep breath and thought, is this the only day that I have the chance to do what I have to do? This is how I broke it down the alley once. This is before I was where I'm at right now financially, but this has nothing in, co- in coordinates with it. But it was like, okay, if we were down to our last three hundred dollars and we needed to pay the light bill, and it costs exactly three hundred dollars. You telling me you would rather get these kids these gifts than keep these lights on, pay these bills. Mm -hmm. Start pulling out this loan and that loan. Do this loan, that loan, put us behind the eight ball, and now we really struggling just because of some gifts. But when July came and we had $300 and we could have took them to the water park and we could have went to a, 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 a vacation or did whatever we wanted to do with them, we decided to not do anything and we used it upon ourselves. So are we really saying that blessing these kids can only happen during this time with this kind of money? But what if the funds don't are not there? Is that an act of God because we don't have money during Christmas? Are these kids now going to start learning to hate us because it's Christmas time and y'all ain't gave us no gifts? Are we really going to beat ourselves up for, for being good parents by giving them food, shelter, uh, uh, means of transportation, you know, putting them in X, Y, and Z groups to develop their brains, develop their skills. Are we really bad parents because we decided not to spend this or to, to celebrate this one day with them? Mm-hmm. And and then when we came down to, okay, well, what does thus say the Lord? And then came to an understanding. I mean, for one, their culture wasn't ran off the calendar we run. Mm-hmm. So when you start moving around dates and looking at things, you start to realize, okay, so why am I doing this? Now the big question becomes, why? Am I doing this in vain? 
Am I doing this because my grandfathers and their and fathers And the crazy did it? thing is, is like is most the, is most study Bibles show you the accurate calendar of that time. Yeah. And people will still ignore it. Right. And one thing that I stand by is that if you have to change the name of something, you know it's wrong. To make it right, you know it's wrong. So Easter, Christians call it Resurrection Sunday, but you're still celebrating Easter. Right. You're still going to go to church Sunday morning the, the and then world, go home the, and hunt Easter Catholic eggs. Church did. You're a, so this you, you change the name. Our history. You change the name from Saturnalia to Christmas. Christmas. And like now, and, and, and some that, people say Xmas. What does that X mean? Right. So yeah. I mean, there's a lot of deities and other cultures yeah. who have who these cultures set up their deities to mirror and the, the right hand side of Christ. And the crazy thing is, is that when you look at a lot of the original names before the Catholic Church went and changed the names, the gods that they celebrate are in the name Easter Ishtar, Saturnalia, the god of Saturn. Like the names are in there. Is what, what was this, the the names are in. The proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, Ra, Amun Ra, like this. A lot of guys who you know want to be Kemet and pro black, like the black fist. You know, mm-hmm. throw your black fist. Do you understand what that means? That was the same symbol that they were using for uh, uh, the people who were uh, that movement that when they were marching during. Uh, Ah, man. They said that they were this. The two women who were a part of the Black Lives Matter. Oh, movement. no, I know. Um, Marxists. There you go, Marxists. The Marx- Marxism was a sign of the Black Fist. Do you not understand that P- who uh, the Black Panthers really were? Mm-hmm. Huey P. Newton, who they were actually in cahoots with, and all, like, all these government agencies. They put on fronts that they're not these things. But to the sheep and to the masses that are weak and, and that don't know, I mean, this is why there's a famous movie line on uh, one of the uh, X-Men movies. <laughs> I like him too. Magneto's like, man, let, let the pawns go first. That's kind of like how God's going out. Man, let these weak individuals go first. If they really going to follow in line. You almost said some bad words. <laughs> <laughs> let, let these weak mofos go first. Hey, if, if you're not... This is why the scriptures say, study, meditate on what I mm-hmm. have. God will reveal himself. Show yourself approved. Yeah, but I mean, shoot. I mean, if, if you're going to be cast by whatever wind that blows and whatever waves that, you know, come through, cool. All right. We're we going to see where you end up. Mm-hmm. But you're supposed to be in the in the scriptures heavily. Yeah. Resting on the things of God. But and, meditating and on that. Manito's like, man, let the pawns go first. You know, we're not going, the, the strong in the Lord, yeah, we're supposed to care about our brothers and sisters. We're, we're supposed to get them to be at the level lift we're them at, up, you know, lift them up. Them. But if they're not moving, like you had a friend and you left out, out on the wayside and that wasn't bad on you. Because if you keep carrying this person and you're carrying their luggage and your own luggage and they slowing you down, they're hindering your one, mm-hmm. you can end up yeah. backsliding. Hey, look, if this ain't what you want, just let me know because... I can't keep casting my pearls to a swine who ain't ready for this fruit. If you're not ready for this, we can. I can either step back and yeah. we can we can go slower. Or if this is not what you want, then hey, let me know so I can just step away and worry about me, my, and me and mine. Yeah. And what, Brian, I, I, and it, it, it took a long time for me to get there. So I was saying, it took me a long time to get to this point because I, I am someone who craves friendship or not even like kinship, I should say. People that I share things in common with. And that's easy to get confused with friendship because sometimes you just want that company, I should say. And when you're married, for one, you should seek that first in your spouse before you seek any, seek it in anyone else. But before I got to the point where I am now, where I don't care, like, okay, if you're holding me back, I'm gonna let you go. Like I used to hold on to friendships that would hold me back in my walk with Christ. And then guess who ended up the hurt one? Me. I'm not to say that me letting go of friendships doesn't hurt now, but I am a lot quicker to just dip. Yeah, I know. I, I always, Brian probably don't know this, but I used to always wanted to be an only child. 
I believe and it. Every oldest child says I want to be an only I, child. Then I realized I wasn't the only child. I had brothers and sisters, siblings older than me, right? <clears throat> but uh, I always thrived on being alone. And I've mm-hmm. talked about, you know, sometimes the scriptures have a, or talk about being alone. Some mm-hmm. people, I mean, some people ought to be alone. I mean, to accomplish the work that they need to. I mean, we need even 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 if you are married, you should you ought to embrace solitude. But um, I've been told by someone once, you know, like life is a book, life is a movie. You know, there's different chapters, different parts of the movie. Not everybody goes to the next. Goes to the next scene. Mm-hmm. Not everybody makes it to the next next chapter. And as people, we got to be okay with that. I mean, if we're supposed to be growing and developing and, you know, we change as we, you know, with this growth, right? We must accept that certain things that we thought were good are not what they are. Like uh, Solomon says, you know, when I was a young man, a young boy, you know, when I was a child, you know, I thought like a child, spoke like a child, but when I became a man. I put away childish things. Put away childish things. You you must be like that when you come into the knowledge, you know, hey, I might have done X, Y, and Z, and those things now that I know were against the things of God because of what they represent. Yes, we can do things uh, with a lack of knowledge. We can do things out of ignorance. Mm-hmm. But once you're, you're brought out of that ignorance... Or once you're told of the ignorance in which you committed, you can't go to the throne of God with that same ignorance. And, yeah, you have to answer the, for the truth that you know. Ignorance, you can't take. And this is what I was told by Brother Richard. I remember one time when I was like, well, slipping back. Let me just go make this money. You no, know, Brother Richard, help. What, what should I do? What you gonna tell God? Mm. I said, huh? He said, mm. You can't go before the throne of God with ignorance, Brian. There's like ignorance of God is like you. What you gonna? You know, I you know you. You're not gonna lie to him, so you're just gonna give him an ignorant answer to the to the acts on which you partake. Mm-hmm. Knowing that they're wrong, you just willfully was ignorant or dumb in doing the things that you wanted to do. Right, and it goes back to. Uh, we were talking one time and you told me you're like there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom because wisdom is applying the knowledge that you have and when you're walking with Christ he gives you everything you need to know but you can still be ignorant correct correct you can be ignorant in your act because knowledge is one thing it's one thing to obtain the in the the source of something it's another thing to act upon it you're not you're not wise you, they don't you're not called a wise individual if you do a lot of dumb stuff correct and you know better oh yeah i knew if i plug this or if i stuck this screwdriver in a wall socket i might have the possibility of being electrocuted but i did it i wanted to see yeah i really wanted to find out how much voltage or ampage was in there so I did it it's not you know wise that's why with certain things I just google it for Ethan with certain questions so I'm like if I don't give him an answer that boy's this scary. boy is gonna go do it definitely but you know you, we're supposed to study and test the scriptures we're supposed to study and scriptures say test the spirits you know See if they are of you know of good fruit or of bad you know where they where these spirits or where these things derive from. I just me personally when I said Lord I'm putting away my past life and I'm walking in Your way now. I couldn't keep going on without answers to why I was doing what I was doing. Some people are cool with just being told, Hey, this is what you need to do. Do it. Some people some people are like that. And maybe that it maybe everyone and before that's why, was no, right. But, maybe I am a leader because no, but that's me, why you can't tell me go do this. And uh, I don't know. No, why, I think why, that's why, why me and what, you clash. What do you mean do this? Do this? Why? I if think, I don't understand what doing that leads to, 
I need to understand what doing what's gonna happen to me if I do it. Yeah, I think that's why you and me clash so much though, is because you are very much a question asker. And to me I'm like Okay, like that sounds right. Like I will question something when it don't sound right. But like for instance when you come to me and you're like, Oh, this, this and this, I'm just like, Okay, and I don't wanna say that I blindly follow you, but it's because I have so much faith in God in you. Like, oh, I give you a clear one. When uh, I said disinformed, and you're like, oh, you mean misinformed? I'm like, no, those are two way too different things. Right, and you told me you and broke it I down, and you, I was like, okay, like that makes but sense. But then later on in that day, uh, by like the next day, yeah. I showed you the, the definitions. That'd be so and irritating. You're like, I told you I believed you. I was like, nah, I don't care if you believe me. I mm. want you to know that where I got my information and why I say what I say. I'm not not trying to be right, but just in case, yeah, and someone like, else outside of me tells you something. Yeah, because when I you feel have the no, because to, I feel like whenever you do the stuff, the difference is between misinformed and disinformed. I feel like that don't ever come off as it be coming off from your heart, as you saying. Because to me, whenever you do that, I take it as I'm gonna just prove it to her, show her I ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't think that. I'm saying what I just said. <laughs> I'd rather you have the knowledge and understanding why I said what I said and what yeah. these words mean and what the truth is. So the next time you have an encounter with this, you understand whether someone was misinformed with or false disinformed. information or disinformed, purposely being fed false information to have a certain belief. In something. That's the whole world right now is disinformed. Like, well, yeah, this, this is probably a good topic that we probably have to touch base on again if yeah if uh the consumers are wanting to hear more more about more, mysteries have of other iniquity. holidays that, like uh I, i'm only talking about american culture because this is the culture i grew up in with correct the, with you know valentine's christmas uh the only one holiday we celebrate would be thanksgiving i understand thanksgiving i mean if I, that, we just go I don't see the harm never been within the research never seen the harm in it other than what they did to the Indians. I understand that, you know, with giving them the diseases and everything. Mm-hmm. But the, the thought of and the jest behind Thanksgiving, I mean, I ha- I mean, we do celebrate that. But of course, I don't know how anyone can celebrate. But I can't even way. say celebrate because it's not like we're. I mean, other than truly just eating. Yeah, yeah. other than getting together and eating. Yeah, there ain't really like too much we don't. Yeah. Other than watching. It's the not Cowboys. like we all sit around the table and say, "What are you thankful for? What are you True. thankful for?" We literally just eat. Well, I'm saying we partake in something. Okay. And we partake in the action of doing something. But Christmas, you ain't going to get me going nowhere. Valentine's Day, I, I probably already did something for your birthday or I'm doing something by the end of that week. So There's just a lot of things that I don't see a need to be celebrated. Yeah, now you don't. Mm-hmm. But growing up, you probably... I mean, just e- even, even me as a, as a young boy, like, mm, it's just what who you do did. I want to be my Valentine this year? I mean, oh, I always knew boys I was just always getting... try, men try to get machismo no. on Valentine's Day. No, girl, when I was a girl, kid, girls who are single, I when I was know, an elementary, hitting the club trying to see, no. you know, what Foxy Brown they might pull. I knew I ain't never had a Valentine till I married you, and then you didn't celebrate Valentine's Day, so I still ain't never had no Valentine. This this was a match made in heaven. Sure. Everything worked out perfectly. I knew in elementary the only reason was, I was getting Valentine's. Everything was aligned to happen the way the way it did. I, I had no expectations because ain't nobody ever did anything for me. St. Patrick's Day, that's another one I don't understand. Another get married, get drunk uh, celebration. Uh, celebration Cinco de Mayo. Uh, Why are Americans celebrating Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, I don't get that one. When you have July 4th coming right around the corner. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand it. So make it That one's for the mother goddess, you know, uh, the Statue of Liberty that stands yeah. in New York. It's supposed to be like the capital of the world. World tra- That's why where the World Trade Centers were. I mean, there's so much stuff to this. I mean, if we really wanted to dive and dig into it, people could. But I, I, I just want to tell people, don't do things in vain. Please just don't be vainful in, in your acts. Or like Understand, I tell my kids, don't lack if you don't know why you're doing something, don't do it. At least get an answer before you do it. Understand it before you do it. Understand it before you participate in it. But even within that, if within your understanding, 
ask yourself, does this align with what God would have mm-hmm. me to do? Is this going to glorify God at the, the end of the yes, day? Yes, this might make me happy, but how does God feel about me partaking or going about doing this? Mm-hmm. You could be leading your family to a generation of death. I mean, this goes to like my Puerto Ricans in, in America. You, I mean, they celebrate a lot of things. The Hispanic culture celebrates a lot of things. Not just Puerto Ricans, but Mexicans. Like, why do you do it? Do you think God, God, Jesus said that I'm the king of the living. Mm-hmm. What is you trying to talk to the dead for? Mm-hmm. What can mm-hmm. the dead give you that God can't give you in this life as you're living right now? Then you, they, 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 they you wonder why little, little Su- Susie Q levitating off her bed. In the minute, like, come on, man. I, I just don't think people understand. You keep, you, you, playing me, with forces. you keep giving me this imagery and I'm just not going to be able to sleep. <laughs> I'm, I, I watched Exorcist one time, and that was it for me. Right. I didn't need to see it again. But I'm saying, and that's another thing. I mean, look, we're talking about through Opening the television portals. Yeah, Opening portals. We open. We we give ourselves and put ourselves in situations. God ain't even meant mean for us to be in. We mm-hmm. we partake in things that are not holy. People wonder, well, what do you call yourself? If you don't call yourself Christian. Scriptures say. Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is. And that doesn't and, mean we're saying we're holier than thou. I don't sure get it twisted exactly. and don't start no, putting words that. in my mouth. But I do strive, Christ says, to strive for. Strive for perfection. Yes. And in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, God said, be, you are a holy people. You are set apart. Mm-hmm. In the New Testament, Christ tells them, be ye holy as your Father is. And then in, in Peter, mm-hmm. and throughout the, throughout the, the gospel after the four books mm-hmm. Mark, Luke, John Matthew it's written be ye holy be holy be holy be holy God's called us to be holy to strive for sanctified. righteousness to be sanctified to be set apart to be a light you, how can you be holy and you do these things that he does and again, again I'm not saying I'm perfect I tell you right now I'm a day to day work in progress but, but I ask for those things every night I and for know every not morning. to take part in, I do my best to not take part in. And when I do sin, and when I do have my mistakes, I do repent. Thank God for for repentance. And I don't just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And doing it. No, that's not repentance. You know, nah. But if I do have something, I mistakenly fall under I repent and I find and put up boundaries to prevent myself to not continuously go down that path to have that's myself a concept. under repentance yeah, that's like, a concept Lord. I'm trying to teach the boys already too just as a mother right. as a parent you're gonna make mistakes hey, hey, look. you're not supposed to keep making the same right. mistake so when Ethan tries to tell me sorry for something doing, doing some, Ethan if you're telling me sorry that means you're not gonna do it anymore because again, that's a lesson that I don't see it in the moment, but that ties back to scripture. But yeah, let's go ahead and end this out. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. That is it for this episode of the 2911 podcast with Allie McKithen and Brian McKithen. And remember that we love you guys, but Jesus loves you more. <laughs>